This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create these flat style vector avatars using Inkscape. And if you'd like to learn more about how Inkscape works, be sure to check out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over every tool and feature in Inkscape, and I explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. I'll put a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So we'll get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just set up our documents so that we're all working with a similar view. I just want to come up here to where it says View. Make sure we have Custom selected. We'll come over here to Zoom. Make sure you zoom in at one-to-one. -one. And then I'm going to open up the Align and Distribute menu with this button over here, or you could just press Control, Shift, and A, as you can see here. Where it says Relative to, we're going to want to have this set to Last Selected. And then I'll open up the Fill and Stroke menu, which is over here, or you could just press Control, Shift, and F and we'll have that open as you can see there. So to get us started, basically what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be using really basic common shapes in Inkscape to put together avatars or, or faces. And I'll just do one as an example here. I'm going to grab this squares and rectangles tool right here, and I'm going to click and drag to create a rectangle like that, a little longer in height, a little larger in height than it is in width, because this is going to represent our avatar's head. And up here, this little node at the top right, this little uh, circular node, I'm just going to bring that down like that to give this rounded corners. And I'll give this a color, just to color in the face here, maybe like a shade of orange or something like that. Over here in the Fill tab, under the HSL tab, I'm just going to adjust the color a little bit, maybe give it a little more vibrance like that. There we go, that looks pretty good. And now that represents, that's going to represent the head. I'm just going to put some eyes on here now. So let me grab the circle tool and I'm going to hold control and shift so that it makes a perfectly round circle like that and just click and drag. There we go. I'll make the eyes black or a dark shade of gray like that. Put this towards the center like that. Create another eye. So I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate and hold control and move this over here like that. Now I'm going to create another rectangle right in the center here, which is going to represent the nose. So let me grab the, the rectangle tool again make the nose put that right there. I want to make this the same shade as the uh, the head here, but slightly darker. So I'm going to grab the dropper tool, which is over here. I just like to press D on the keyboard to grab that. It's a lot more convenient. Click on that to give it that color. And I'm just going to make this a little darker like that. Looking pretty good. Now I'm going to grab this select tool. I just want to make sure this is all centered up on the page here. So I'm going to hold shift and click on the head right there. And I'm going to make sure the nose is centered on the head. And I'm going to take these two circles, the eyes, hold shift, click them both, group them together with this button up here that says group selected objects, then hold shift and click on the head and then center that up on the uh, horizontal axis like that, or the vertical axis rather. Now let me click off of that to deselect everything. I'm going to click over those objects right there so I select them both and just hold control and scale them up a little bit. You may have to scale them up or down depending on how big or small you made them. So just go ahead and manually adjust it as you see fit. And what I'll do now is I'll just put like a little bit of a, a little mouth down here. So I'm gonna, going to grab the circles and ellipses tool, hold control and shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And I only want half of that circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to a path. I'll go to path, object to path. I'm going to grab the Bezier pen, which is, uh, I'm just going to press B on the keyboard to grab that. It's this, it's, this, it's this icon right here. I don't normally use these tools, so I just have the keyboard shortcuts memorized. And then I want to turn on snapping up here. I just want to make sure I have snapping enabled. And I want to have this one right here enabled that says snap to cusp nodes, including rectangle corners. And this one right here, snap to smooth nodes, including quadrant points of ellipses. I want to make sure those two are enabled. I'm going to snap to the left side of this circle, click snap to the right side of that circle, click, and then finish this shape up around the outside like that. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the circle so we have them both selected and go to path difference. And what I want to do now is I'm going to make this a shade of red like that. This is going to represent the mouth. I want to put a rectangle up top here to represent teeth. Let me first put this over here. I'm going to hold control and scale that down a little bit. Let me hold shift and click on both of those objects and make sure I have them centered up like that. I might want to take these eyes and nose and move them up a little bit. I'm going to put another rectangle right here to represent teeth. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to make sure that the rectangle is the same width as this half circle. So I'm going to click on the half circle and up here where it says width, I'm going to triple click that so we have it all selected and I'm going to copy whatever that number is. I'm going to hit control C on the keyboard. And now I'm going to create a rectangle. So I'm going to come over here, create a rectangle like that. 
we're going to want squared corners in this rectangle. So I'm going to click this button up here to make the corners sharp like that. And now I'm going to paste the height in there. So I'm going to grab this select tool. And again, where it says width, triple click that and then just hit control V to paste the height in there like that. That's what I'm looking for. I'm going to make that white to represent teeth. Maybe make that a little smaller. I'm going to hold shift, click on the mouth, group those two together with the group button up here. Oops, there we go. Let me make that a little smaller. Again, make sure we have it centered up. It looks like it already is. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some ears to the sides of the head here. Now, if you see me scrolling, um, you see me uh, zooming in and out like this, you could just hold control and roll up and down your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And to move around the page, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move around the mouse. So let me grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'm going to hold control and shift to create another ellipse or a circle rather like this. I want to make this the same color as the skin tone here. So I'm going to grab the dropper tool over here and make that the same color. Now I want this to be positioned beneath the head. So I'm going to come up here to where it says lower selection to the bottom and click on that. And let me just turn off snapping for the time being because that may get in the way of where I want to position the, uh, the, the uh, ears here. So let me bring this over like that. I'm going to hold control and shift and scale that down. It looks a little too, little too big. Position that right about there. And now I'm going to create a, a duplicate of this circle by pressing control D and I'm going to make it the same color as the nose right here. So again, we're going to grab the dropper, go like that. There we go. Now I'm going to lower this down. I'm going to lower this one step, lower this another step so that it goes beneath the head there. And to do that, I'm pushing this button right here, lower selection one step. I'm going to hold control and shift, scale that down. And that right there is what I'm looking for. So I'll hold shift now and click on both of these circles. So I have them both selected and I'll group them together, group selected objects. And now I want to duplicate them because I'm going to use them for the other ear over here. So instead of right clicking it and going to duplicate, I'm just going to press control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. And then I'll hold control and just click and drag this over to the right side like that. And I'm going to lower them to the bottom. Maybe I'll move this over a little closer like that. And I want to hold shift and click on the other ear over here. I want both sets of ears selected and I want to group them together and then hold shift and click on the head and center that up on the vertical axis like that. Now let me zoom out a little bit so I can see how this is coming out. It's looking pretty good. One thing I want to do is make the head a little more elongated. So let me convert this to a path. I'm going to go to path, object to path. And now I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to click and drag over this top portion of nodes over here and just hold control and move them up like there. Because we're going to put some hair over the uh, head here. And I want to make sure I have more room to work with. So let me grab this Select tool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some hair for our avatar here. So to do this, I'm going to create an offset of the head here. So I'm going to go to, with this head selected, I'll go to Path, Linked Offset. And that's going to create a copy of it. And the copy is going to be located behind the head. So let me just come over here and pick a color for the hair. I'm going to go with like this shade of brown over here. You're not going to see it change colors on your screen because it's positioned behind the head. But once you've done that, you can take this little node and pull that out. And you'll notice it's coming out like that. Now let me finalize that by converting it to a path. We'll go to Path, Object to Path. And I want to grab the Select tool and lower this to the bottom so it goes beneath the ears. And now I just want to cut off the portion of the hair that is below the ears. So let me grab the Bezier pen again. I'm going to start right about here. Click to create a point, hold control, bring the line straight through like that. Create another point. Now we can just let go of control and finish this shape around the outside like that. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the object there and go to path difference. And there we go. Now we have uh, the sides of the hair anyway. I'm going to add some hair to the top up here. So to do that, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool again and I'm just going to create a rectangle over the top here to create some hair to put on top of the head. I'm going to position this right about here and I'm going to make this shade a little lighter just to add a little bit of depth to the uh, design here. And what I want to do now is I want to leave this corner sharp but I want to make these three corners rounded. And to do that, I'm going to use a live path effect called um, fill it in chamfer. So let me first convert this to a path. I'll go to path, object to path. Now I want to open up the path effects menu. So I'll go to path, grab the path effects menu. And right here where it says plus, click on plus to add a new path effect. And the one I'm looking for is corners or the fill it in chamfer path effect. Click on that. 
And down here where it says change only selected nodes, make sure you click on that to have that box ticked. And I'm going to grab the edit paths by nodes tool and I'm going to click and drag over this node on the top left, then hold shift, click on this, click and drag over that node on the bottom left. And then again, hold shift and take this node over here on the bottom right so that we only have these three nodes selected because I want to make these three corners rounded. Now where it says uh, radius, I'm just going to click this little plus icon and you're going to notice it rounds the corners. It rounds those corners as we do that while leaving this corner sharp. That right there is what I'm looking for. So let me let me finalize that by going to path, object to path. I can now close out of the path effects menu. We don't need that anymore. Place that right about there. This is starting to come together now. Um, one final thing I want to do is just add a little bit of a uh, a little bit of an accent piece right here to make it look like um, like light is reflecting off the hair. So I'm going to take this object. I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Control D, and then I'm going to hold Shift and click on this one of these lighter shades down here for the for the color we originally used for the hair to give that an outline, otherwise known as a stroke. Now let me remove the uh, fill color from this object. I'm going to click this little red X over here to the bottom left. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift and scale this down a little bit like that. I just want to position this right about here. I just want to take a sample of this line right here. I don't want the entirety of this line. If you want to come over, if you want, you can come over here to the Stroke Style tab to adjust the thickness of this line. Yours, the thickness of your line may vary de depending on what you most recently used. So I'm going to make this a little thicker. And now I just, like I said, I just want to grab a sample of this line. I don't want the entire line, so I'm going to grab the Bezier pen. Click to create a point, hold control, bring this straight through like that. Then bring this straight through like that. Back to the starting point. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the object and go to path, cut path. And that's gonna slice that into two individual pieces. So let me click off of that and take just this object and just get rid of that by pressing delete on the keyboard. And now we have this, I'm gonna go come over here to where it says stroke paint. I'm gonna adjust the color of that a little bit. Make that a little, there we go, just a little lighter than the hair over here. So if we zoom out, you can see we're pretty much done. We have created our vector avatar. I'm going to leave a link in the description of the video to where you can download 12 of these vector avatars for free, and then you can use them however you want. You can mix and match different parts and elements and, and pretty much do whatever you want with them. So uh, I'll be releasing them into the public domain, so feel free to use them however you want, whether it be for personal or commercial use. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.